So, we have seen the developments of the adventure that Ukraine armed forces took in Russian territory. We have, we are seeing the outcome. Not only is a, a stalled offensive, but uh, talks are now being made of retreating valuable troops from there to to do to serve as fire brigade, brigades for other parts of the front lines. In the meantime, the Russians barely took any forces. They did take some, but not significantly in numbers from other parts of the front to uh, do their fire br brigade part on that part of the front. Fire brig the fire brigade role is the it's the term I think it was branded in World War II in the War of Movement doctrine where you where you have troops that are more mobile and they can go and uh, intervene in spots of crisis in the front lines so that gave the Russians a big advantage on other parts of the Donbass front they took the advantage they did advance they improved significantly their positions and only now the Ukrainians are starting to react and uh, I wouldn't say contain because the situation is still dire for them but uh, the Russians are not uh, advancing as they were some days ago that's because they're not gonna do any careless advancements advances uh, for logical reasons I mean no unnecessary losses are taken they would they will just resume the, Pro the Pokrov direction salient, they will just widen it, expand it, gain a strong foothold, uh, impermeate it to counterattacks, and then keep grinding on. And I don't see much solution for the Ukrainians militarily, uh, and I really, I really don't buy the, the version that uh, the US and NATO didn't know about the Ukrainian plans in Kursk that's that's really I mean because that's it is written Western powers all over it the operation the way it was conducted in the same fashion the tactics were in the same fashion as other offensives that Ukraine has conducted using the the blitzkrieg in this case they took advantage of a place where was hardly hardly defended and so they could exploit that while the Russian troops didn't arrive. Because when they did arrive, it stopped. It was simple as that. A lot of pro-Ukrainian channels, they made a huge fuss about it. It's like Russian is not... Because they were counting, they were reporting by the hour, right? And by the hour, you get the impression this, this daily reporting or hourly reporting can really, really be misleading really I mean imagine you reporting by the hour by the day <laughs> the German that advances in inside Soviet Union in World War two I mean no one would have believed that the Soviet Union could win right every day more advances but war is not decided like that and so the pro-ukrainian generals were all cheering up including including our, our friend Jake Bro, which I've made a video about, I think is, uh, I really, I mean, it does work because algorithm from YouTube selects guys like jo Jake Bro, Joe Bro, Jake Bro, to, to show to the people. Uh, but that's, they are, <laughs> how do you say, they are the, the cuties of the algorithm. Uh, they were saying Russia is unable to contain Russia huge bombastic spectacular titles of thumbnails of videos 
dozens and thousands of views and what propaganda I, I, I despite the views the number of views it, it have this kind of channels that cheer for Ukraine I do not sometimes it still puzzles me how their viewers after time passes and truth comes up they don't see it and I I look at these channels and sometimes I the other day I understood at least part why they don't see it because even when the Russians were when the, the Ukrainians were running in front of the Russians in the Pokrovsk direction you could see thumbnails uh, of pro-Ukrainian channels with titles like we killed all the Russians the rest have fled something like this things to give you the impression of some other reality but not the one in place right okay this it's, it's really I think in the, the future historians and people who study psychology and this phenomenon and this propaganda I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about 100 years from now, if civilization as we know it still exists. The look at back at this point in history, and I, I mean, if they have to call it something, they, they would call it the new dark ages, for sure. Because it was about to be the age of enlightenment, because of all the explosion in information technology, accessible to anyone. But instead, it became an explosion of very narrow, very, how would I say, such propaganda that uses arguments that are very petty and narrow-minded and dark age-like, you know, herd mentality, enemies irrational hate of others more creed than uh, rationality more belief than rationality this kind of i mean you have all kinds of shit today all kind, even the ones that you don't think they are uh, directly involved in in this uh, propaganda wave because they talk about other things sometimes completely nonsense for example like flat earth and other nonsense they still serve their purpose because you have to have a lot of little niches thousands millions if possible of little niches where you can fit all the people and so that these all little groups can fit in all these little niches and one thing they cannot do that they cannot agree amongst each other this is perfect Union has, have, has always been the problem for the establishment and this is perfect. So Where was I going with this? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about the Ukrainian channels cheering for this giving different side of reality and I and I've and I've said here before that of course I, I am aware that Russia does propaganda. I mean, it's I've, I've stated that several times but maybe it's good to keep repeating once in a while and I keep comparing the two <laughs> and and believe me if I had if I had to give scores to, to each of them uh, you you know you know my answer already right the other side of this uh, of this all this turmoil world turmoil that uh, it didn't begin, it did not begin in the, you have to realize this, it did not begin in 2022, accelerated in 2022, and it, and it didn't even uh, not begin in 2014, it accelerated, it was a stage, it began before, I mean if you just look at Russia-Ukraine affair, it began way before since the Americans started to undermine the Ukraine government, Ukraine democracy, financing groups, 
financing NACI groups inside started there. Right? It started when NATO failed all the promises of uh, moving eastward. It started when all this rhetoric suddenly Russia was once an ally, a partner, and suddenly it became a villain when they realized it was a sovereign country and it was heading it was heading that way and now we have uh, we keep things keep, uh, keep getting worse when we when we think okay it's like this they are at conflict but uh, things remain the same but no when you have the arrest of Pavel Durov's blatant suppression of free speech you have the rotten rotten democracies of Europe completely controlled I mean and let alone the United States it's a it's a joke the democratic process in the United States it's a complete joke because even if you're maybe you are the kind of person that uh, are cheering for uh, Donald Trump and I understand that I mean I understand it seems that out of that huge broad choice that you have there Donald Trump is the one that would not align with this world domination agenda at least in the way that it's being done but I don't believe that either I don't buy Donald Trump for I really think it's strange when I see Tulsi Gabbard and GFK Jr. endorsing Donald Trump so it's really strange Tulsi Gabbard it's she's she's been changing her speech and her ways and uh, I used to be a big fan of her now I'm suspicious of her I don't know what to think and in the meantime while we keep pointing the finger at China and Russia for lack of freedom we were the ones who arrested Durov. He was never arrested in Russia. It was in France, above all places. Uh, our social media is more and more controlled. Everything that keeps that uh, gets to a size, not my channel, my channel is insignificant, but every platform or channel that gets to a significant size and it doesn't share the the single narrative allowed, the only single narrative allowed, the only single vision of the world allowed, it will get, it will be, it will suffer a crackdown. And that's, I mean, it's plenty of evidence. Some of you in the comments sometimes disagree with this, my opinions, but uh, I mean, it's, it's not just my opinion, there are the facts. I mean, if I I already named several journalists arrested for publishing information. I already named several YouTubers. I mean, remember, for example, take for instance Mike Jones. He was doing videos walking about in Russia, walking the streets of Russia. For example, like uh, Alex Christoforo does. He's walking about, talking politics. Uh, reading headlines, talking about, commenting them, they deleted this channel twice. <laughs> Bad and for good. And this is just one of many, of many, and many other channels that are really valuable in information that they provide. I can name one of the oldest I used to follow. For example, I don't know if you know this one, South Front. South Front, uh, it's a news organization really one of the best I've seen so far for many years it was the one source I was going to before telegram way before telegram was the one source I was going to and how do I know it's good because it was right it was truthful how do I know it was truthful because time tells <laughs> they have they depict the events they report and then time will tell if it was truth or not. True or not, right? And South Front for me was like the most reliable ever. 
for co conflicts worldwide. Worldwide. First, they were banned from Facebook. Then they were banned from YouTube. And then they were. I mean, they were. And then they were cast all their money channels, PayPal and the likes. Everything was cancelled for them. You tell me. You feel like living in a free world because I keep, I keep getting people telling me this. Ah, oh, but at least we are more free than in Russia. How do you know? How do you know? It's it's nonsense. At some point, it becomes these are sentences that become repetitive. They become embedded in your mind, and you repeat them. But if you stop two minutes to think, you don't know the facts. You don't know what you're talking about. Sorry to say. Don't want to offend anyone. And so, yeah, I follow both sides of information and propaganda. And sorry to say to the ones that uh, really like to consume Washington, Kiev sources, you're being lied to big time most of the time. Big time. Of course, some, some of uh, Ukrainian sources, uh, not mainstream, they, they are improving in quality. I must recognize that. They are improving in quality. I mean, reporting uh, the, the state of the front lines. I mean, that, there's not much to... <laughs> there's not much to tell. I mean, you can't really dodge reality there when it bites you. So sometimes they can de be a little bit delayed recognizing their losses but they are doing it quicker than before that's that's what I can say and I hope I hope Ukrainians I don't know if you know this but if you follow only Western media I'm sure you don't know this there have been protests in Ukraine protests mainly against mobilization protests and you, you might think about this content people taking to the streets in eastern Ukraine, less favorable to Kiev's government, one might think. No, these protests are taking place in, uh, in Lvov region, due to the mass mobilization, due to the lack of return of the bodies, of the dead bodies of the soldiers to the families, uh, and a general discontent because Ukraine is becoming by its own governance, by the hands of its own government, led by the West, it's becoming a, a non-state. A non-state. You have... You don't even have an elected president anymore. They are violating their own constitution. Okay, the US is fine with that. Basically, the US is fine with every violation possible, every dictatorship possible, as long as it serves their purposes. If you don't see this, and sometimes it's, it's hard and people don't, don't see it. I'll give you an example. Today I had a chat on social media because I've published this meme, which I found funny, that it says, it goes like this. If you are feeling useless, remember that the US took Thousands of lives, trillions of dollars, 20 years, and a lot of other shit going on to replace the Taliban with the Taliban in Afghanistan. And I published this, like, it's funny, and it, and, and, but it states an obvious truth, right? What democracy? They were there 20 years stealing and d dealing drugs and laundering money. That, WikiLeaks have shown proof of that, and the, the ultimate proof was was when they got out. Nothing was in control. They were just there securing their business. And I get this one guy commenting, "Oh, but at least women had more freedoms there while they were there." Please, if you got to this part of the video, respond to this in the comments. I would really like to know your opinion on this, on this comment that this guy made to my meme publication. And until then, I hope I see you 
on the next time. Like I said, time is approaching. I got some, I'm getting together some dough all out of my paycheck. I don't get anything from, from doing videos or anything. So I want to visit some places and report back to you guys. In the meantime, we'll be seeing each other hopefully through these means.